Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that we may glorify your name. We ask that we may be open to the guidance of your Spirit as we learn more of your Spirit in preparation for Pentecost. And we ask that we may seek you and follow you in all that we do. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today is, in fact, uh, Friday of the sixth week of of Easter. It is the Friday after Ascension Thursday for those of us, although the readings are the same whether you celebrate Ascension Thursday today or on Sunday. And uh, there are powerful readings, but there's something really important we need to look at here. As I, you know, I think I always say that. Something really important. Well, if it wasn't important, why am I doing this? Right? <laughs> so I think I, I think I say that. I think it's one of those expressions you say a lot. There's something really important we need to look look at. Here. Well, there really is. It's like a, another famous uh, talk show host. I won't mention his name because it doesn't matter one way or the other. But, you know, oh, no, we got a really uh, full show for you. And he I don't know if he realizes he does that. And I listen to him regularly. So obviously I enjoy the program. But it's like, okay, well. But isn't that the point of why we're listening? So, <laughs> so anyway, here we go. Uh, one of the things we're looking at is these powerful words of uh, the Holy Spirit to St. Paul. And he's to go out and he's to preach the gospel. And what happens is that there is this big fight between the Jews and the new Christians, who most of whom are are former, are what we call Messianic Jews. They're Messianic Jews, who are, who are Jews that believe that Jesus is the Messiah, and some of whom are, in fact, Gentiles. And what we learn is that, and this is important, remember, this is also one of the reasons why you don't don't get lost in these people who are focused on the Jews doing this, that, and the other thing uh, in, the, in the Bible, because they're coming, in the, the Jews in the Bible are coming to understand what this all means, too. This is a huge change for them. This is a, a very powerful change. Let, let me give you an example of that, which we can see in what we've been dealing with, uh, the mask mandates. It is really part of our culture that the government does not tell us what to do and how to live and definitely doesn't tell us what to wear in our own house. So when the government comes out and says, for health reasons, this is what we want you to do, everyone is resistant to that. Wait a minute. This is because it's a radical change in culture. Now, a lot of that is worked out in people living on individual levels and also in government halls and stuff. But you can see that big fight that happened, whether you walk into a store wearing a mask is a better way to put it. That is everything our culture rejects. So uh, as, you, as you know, I've said wear the mask because we're coming from a perspective of cooperation. We're coming from a perspective of living our faith in such a way that we're not using it as a um, uh, a bat over someone's head, you know, bumping people over the head with what we believe, where we believe in cooperation. I suppose for me that comes from my military background, because they tell, tell you in the military, if they give you an order that you disagree with, follow the order and then argue about it later. And that's what I absolutely believe. Uh, should be done. And that's essentially what has happened in our country. People are now saying, well, no, we're not going to go down that path again. You know, so they're talking to their legislators and saying, this is what we need to do. But remember, that whole mask idea was, it wasn't that the government is telling you to wear a mask. It's a change in culture. And people went, no. A lot of people went, yes. And remember what I said, in the name of Christ, we we want to show that we are obeying Christ by following the rules. And it's really a testimony to Christ is what we're doing. It's like, we're not going to get into this fight here. We're going to, uh, we've got other things to deal with. So just let it go. Um, and other people didn't follow that path. But you see how intense that culture change happen. Well, now here you have in this first reading, you've got the Jews saying they're not following the law. They call themselves Jews, but they're not following the law. That is a radical culture change. And that's what's behind this. So don't turn around and say, well, the Jews, they've been hostile to Christians or this, that. No, don't, don't, because they don't understand in this, 
the reading, I mean, I'm talk, going back 2,000 years, the, the Jews of 2,000 years, they don't understand this radical change in culture. And so they're reacting to it very intensely. And if you are, if you're Catholic or other form of Christian, and you were Jewish at the time, there's a good chance that many of the people listening would have reacted exactly the same way as the Jews back then. Why? Because it's a change in culture and they don't understand it. So what we're seeing is a major fight over how we worship the Lord. Do we worship the Lord by following the law? Or do we worship the law, the Lord with the law on our hearts, and we do what is best for others? And that's that big change that we're still fighting today. There's, I talked a little bit about uh, a bishop earlier uh, on Twitter. Um, that's the big thing. That even on Twitter, you see some of these bishops saying, this is the rule, you need to follow the rule. Well, there may be a truth to that. But the ultimate rule is it's not so much we follow the rule because the bishop says we we act on the way that the Holy Spirit guides us is the right way to love, which is what the bishop is supposed to teach us. You see that, that difference, the right way to love. And we're called also to teach at times the bishop say this is the right way to love. You have to understand that this is what we're called to do. We'll talk more on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston. In Massachusetts right here on WEZE 590 AM. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out CatholicTV.com. And don't forget our own website, CatholicAudioMedia.com. That's CatholicAudioMedia.com. Check out our website. Check out the archives of the show. And uh, you can also connect to the parish. Don't forget, you have a standing invitation to our 10 o'clock a.m. Mass every single Sunday here at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. You can find how to get there through our website or also stanthonyalston.org. That's stanthonyalston.org. Dot org. So we're talking about this powerful understanding of the Holy Spirit is guiding people to have a new understanding of how we're called to worship the Lord. So there's this big fight between the new Christians and the Jews, and the big fight is a cultural change where the Jews are saying, but we worship the law, the Lord through the law. Now, remember what the law said, a perfect example and we, we need to see this within context. The law says, in, I'm not saying that this happened at the time, but even for our own day, the law says what? You, if you follow the, the law, you cannot have bacon and eggs for breakfast. You can have eggs, but you can't have bacon. That's, and the, the, the law is followed, is followed to such unique level. You cannot have bacon and eggs for breakfast. In the Jewish world, they had a huge fight over the government coming in and saying, you will eat bacon and eggs for breakfast. Actually, they didn't say it that way. They did say you will eat pork, which is what uh, bacon is from. You will eat bacon and eggs for breakfast. It's in Catholic Bibles, um, and it's one and two Maccabees. It's in there, and it's rather graphic because... People were tortured to death if they refused to have bacon and eggs for breakfast. Actually, like I said, it was actually pork they had to eat, so it was a pork meal. But we'll just use bacon and eggs. Uh, do you understand that? So now all of a sudden, now that's in their history. Now all of a sudden, these people who call themselves Jews come along and say, well, we don't have to follow that anymore. There is going to be a reaction there. But the Holy Spirit is guiding them to have a new understanding because as Catholics, we believe that same law is written on our hearts. And what is that law? That law is do unto others as you would have others do unto you. That's the law, is to love God and love neighbor. So uh, that's what we're called to do. And so we're not just called to be good. That's where people make a huge mistake. We're not called to be good. We're called to be loving God and loving neighbor. 
that's more than good. That's being a prophetic in the way we live our lives. And, you know, where we fail is when we're not being prophetic. It's being prophetic in the way we live our lives, living our lives in such a way that we lead all people to know Christ. And that means we have to be rooted in prayer, rooted in the various avenues that the Holy Spirit has given us through the church, but also through our prayer, through our understanding. I'm part of a group called the Fraternity of Priests, and we, through our prayer, share the fruit of our prayer at every single meeting. And usually it's prayer guided by words in the Bible. We go through that every single meeting. And so that's what we're called to do, where, where we talk about the fruit of our prayer and where our prayer is guiding us. And that prayer is not guiding us away from the church. It's guiding us into the church, but there's a lot of things that are in that are not in Catholic teaching that it's guiding us to how how to live. Now, what do I mean? In Boston, jaywalking is almost a sport. Uh, stopping where it says "Don't walk," a lot of people don't do that, even though you should do what it says. Don't walk. But I will stop where it says "Don't walk." Why? It's part of a discipline, a spiritual discipline I I use. So. That's not in Catholic teaching. There's nothing in Catholic teaching that teaches that. But I use that as a spiritual discipline. So besides the fact it's the law, in Boston, it actually can be a spiritual discipline. We'll talk more on Monday. Have a blessed day. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.